What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Marsman here. And today I'm joined with the Marsman crew as we review our episode 9 of The Last of Us TV series on HBO. And as always, in the first half of the video, we do our non-spoiler review where we discuss really the key things that we liked about the episode and give our official ratings. And we're also going to add in our kind of review our impressions overall on the entire series up to this point. And we're also going to do in the second half of the video our really spoiler discussions where we discuss the biggest key points of the episode. And, you know, we just kind of give what we felt about the, you know, what we what we thought about the different parts of it and kind of what we, you know, thought about some major events that happened overall. But let's get started with our review of the diff of the different parts of the episode. The key thing that I'm thinking about when I you know normally we do our impressions, but I want to give us our official reviews just so that we can try to get to the uh, the main parts of uh, the overall series as a whole. So. I'll start with my re official rating of this episode, and I think that when I when I go to the, my rating system, I think of, at this point, I've given a lot of really good praise to many episodes here. I think this show has done a great job overall, so I feel like when I'm looking at this episode, it has done everything you would want to have in a gaming you know series, a gaming adaptation. You have good dialogue, good character development. You have basically all these key characters throughout the entire game are given their light, right? There's never a time where I felt like a character got screwed over uh, in the long run. And everyone kind of had their due here. The action of this episode was very good. There's a lot of good sequences between um, good dialogue as well as just slow paces, but then a really fast-paced episode too. And obviously, this is a, such a key episode to any, you know, to any series. You want to finish off in the right way. And when I think of this episode, they did it as well as you could have. And if you're a fan of the games, you're going to love the way this episode ended because essentially they they mirrored the games in a lot of ways. So if I'm going to give my official rating of this episode, I'll probably give it around an 8.8 .8 in my opinion. I feel like this is probably one of the ender, like the top tiers of all the episodes so far because they had great dialogue from the beginning to end. Great scenes all the way around. They mirrored the games to a T and not saying that was a criteria, but they you know the game ending was, was fantastic and they did that similarly here. But they also... You know they had a lot of good action sequences and you can see right away that this is you know, really setting up the future story in a very good way right and if you're if you know what i'm talking about and played the games they, they did a great job right and the the only things i could say criticism is that i'll talk more about it in the spoiler kind of discussion but and the problem with this episode and we've kind of talked about this before is pacing mainly because you're not given a lot of time, so you have to be very cognizant on time usage, and not just this episode, but all of them, right? And you can you can blame it on HBO, you can blame it on the producers, it, uh, uh, just uh, on this show itself. There's a lot of blame to go around when it comes to pacing, but that doesn't hurt the show as a whole. Like there's one thing if you you know if you look at the show entirely and say how did it perform, it performed very well, right? It's just there are some things you wish were given more time. And they just announced today that season two that focuses on the second game will be kind of broken up into two seasons. So that will be plenty of time for what they're planning to do for, I'm sure, for the game, second game. So that's kind of the fault that the series has, the fault the episode has. But still for me, an 8.8 .8 is a good score. So I'm going to go to Haki first. You're brand new to the story, so I want to get your opinion. What's your rating? So you can give me your, your impressions first, but end with your rating so at least we kind of see the full full boat here so what'd you think man yeah so i thought the episode uh in total was very good uh it's actually tied with uh my last week's episode i'll give my rating right away it's an 8.9 so definitely a top tier episode and kind of a mirror what you said the scenery and the dialogue just throughout the entire series has been one of the strongest things about um this show and obviously it followed the game almost to a t which is we can see very important you know hopefully the future does that and hopefully anyone that uh brings back an adaptation or brings um an adaptation uh, you know to tv looks at this maybe looks at halo and pulls the the good um and kind of <laughs> leaves the bad right so in general i mean i think the the show was very good the episode was very good 
everything kind of went full circle. Ellie, we're not going to get into the spoilers, but Ellie kind of went full circle. Uh, her character development, you got to see, you know, uh, really the beginning of her life in, in a scene, which is very important. And then Joel as well kind of went full circle. And uh, the, the roles reversed a little bit um, with emotion, you know. So we'll, we'll get back into that in the spoilers. But I just think the episode uh, was very good. 8.9 for me. So Angelica, what would you think overall here? I'm at an 8.8, .8 and I'll describe it, you know, this episode in, in a, with a couple words. I thought it was, number one, faithful. Uh, very faithful to the game, which I thought was really important. They really kind of nailed the major points. Um, the second thing, and, and it's what you guys hit on, dialogue. I thought there was some really great dialogue and moments between our two main characters. Um, like moments that when you look back on, on this show, that you're going to say, you know, that was a great scene. Um, just a couple of those, um, won't go into the exact words that were used, but I thought that was great. But the third one is rushed. And I felt that, you know, this needed to cook a little bit more. I get that the, all the main points were hit, but this was, I believe the, the shortest episode of the entire series, which is your finale. And that's pretty uncommon to be to be quite frank to have your finale be the shortest episode and so i did feel like it needed a little bit of more and marsman kind of hit on it there is blame to go around to multiple people on it and maybe uh, i'll kind of dive into a little bit more when we talk about the overall show yeah so with that being said let's transition right to the overall overall show and we'll give our impressions of how we felt the show did and i think if i'm looking at the last of a series I mean, I think it's probably the best adaptation of a video game overall. I think they did, as much as we can say there's flaws to, to this, this show, and there are. But overall, I mean, you, it's hard for you to, to say another adaptation is better than this one, especially when it comes to TV shows. When it comes to movies, you, there are a few more movies that have at least done better in the past few months, even year. But at the end of the day, like, this show is, is I think it's on a pedestal of its own of you know think about how gar and i think that the fact that it was also paired next to some garbage video game tv shows very like recently that people looked at this one and was like this is the shining light of tv yeah the bar was low yeah like the they, they did low. not set the bar high for this at all yeah. and you know and maybe if there was another show that set the bar really high then yeah we might be more critical of this one but the fact that there was really no competition like none that was going to even bring this show into you know the limelight more this is got a has a pedestal of its own right if you're really just just thinking about that now as much as i like the second season of the witcher people look the witcher you know uh you know as as being not like the greatest especially the blood the blood the yeah. blood uh i forgot what they call the blood rain or blood war or whatever like th Very that nice. was horrible like that was that was bad and so when you have that one being recent the halo show being recent like you you got nothing there's no one, and then last, uh, the Resident Evil, all of them are just bad. They're all garbage. So then Last of Us comes into the fray, and they're like, wow, we actually do it the right way, and everyone adores it because they did it the right way. As much as there are some changes, and, and we'll obviously talk about that later on as well, there are some changes, but not to the level of, like, you don't know what the hell you're watching. Like, the Halo show changed stuff that just made you like, who is this character? Like, who is the chief at this point? And who yeah. is this man that's playing as the Master Chief? Because it's not him. It's not the Master Chief. And and that's the part. It's like at least the biggest thing, the characters, the main plot all were consistent. And people can rag on all this bull about like Bella Ramsey doesn't look like Ellie to the highest extent. Or, you know, Pedro Pascal is not is not Joel exactly. Or Sarah doesn't look like Joel's daughter in the game. Who gives a damn? Right? If, as long as the actors and actresses did their part and they did it well like just just get over it. like it, it's fine like this is exactly what you wanted for a show and i'm gonna get it we're not gonna go into ratings of the show uh because that's that's really difficult to just jump into and give a perfect rating but i think the overall most episode almost all the episodes of the show landed on some key things there are some of them were more down than others but i can almost give you an average a rolling average was way higher than anything i've seen so that's just my impression so We'll jump to Langelico next. What was your overall feelings of the show as a whole? I couldn't agree with you more. I do think this is the best video game adaptation um, that we've seen. And I know that there has been other really strong shows. We mentioned um, Arcane won at the Gamer Awards for Best Adaptation last year. And Edge Runner, Cyberpunk Edge Runners won Anime of the Year at the Anime Awards just recently for last year, over 
top tier other animes like Demon Slayer and Attack on Titan. So they've gotten strong things, but I think this one's a little different, right? It, number one, it's not animated. And number two, it is a direct kind of copy of a video game when the others encompass the world. And so that's why I do think The Last of Us kind of separated itself a little bit. Not that those guys deserve to get knocked at all because they deserve the awards that they got. But I do think Last of Us is kind of separated a little bit. And I hope my, my goal is that it, like like Haki kind of said before, is that it motivates other studios to look at some tremendous IPs that there are there because Last of Us is a tremendous story. There are other games that you can build stories for. And I hope that this motivates them on the live service side. Hint, hint, Halo, but another one is God of War for Amazon. Yeah, that's the other one. on the say. fight as well. So I hope this motivates them to you know to create a really good game but i can't this the, like you mentioned this is not a perfect series but i think the pacing two things that really uh could have made this show even better number one pacing was a struggle all season long i mean there's no there's no debating uh that um and and there's a lot of different reasons for it i, I meant you know mars man and i that discussed off offline and on this show what could have you changed and episode three is definitely a big one where like that one got 80 minutes but where are the other minutes going and the other side of it is HBO. You kind of shortchanged The Last of Us crew, um, giving nine episodes. I mean, Game of Thrones season one had more than nine. Sopranos had more than, than nine first season. The Wire had more than nine. Um, Succession, I believe, had more than nine on the first season. So why did The Last of Us get shortchanged? Because it's a video game. So that's yeah. the sad part. But pacing and the second was it was infected. We need more infected going forward. Yeah. And uh, Haki, what were your overall feelings? This is your first taste of The Last of Us. Wait, how did it feel? Yeah, so for a person that didn't play the game, it makes me want to play the game and, and see the real story just in a video game, right? I, I want to play the video game and see the full fleshed out. I think it's like a 25 or 30 minute, uh, or excuse me, a 25 or 30 hour uh, game. So it definitely makes me want to go and play the game. Um, but it just goes to show the game was an award-winning game, you know? Uh, I'm pretty sure it did win. one game of the year. Yeah, one game of the year, yeah. right? So it goes to show you if because they stuck to, you know, really the core of the writing and, and you know, they brought in uh, some of the voice actors that, that played, which was pretty cool, but because they stayed to the core of, of the writing and because Neil Drunkman really had a strong say about the show as well, um, it, could, it just shows you how successful a show can be. And I know Angelic Hill and you had, had kind of harped on this. That's all you need to do for a game to have an amazing story and amazing characters. If you can bring that to real life to a TV show, that's all you have to do. You just have to bring yeah, the general audience will like it because it's a good yeah. story. I got some part on that. It'll bring in the fans of the, of the video game, and then it'll bring in additional fans. What Halo did was it killed the fans and tried to bring in a bunch of new fans, and it was just a disaster. So, you know, God of War, like Langelica said, like God of War has something to look uh, up to, and, you know, anything else that, that wants to become, or any uh, video game that wants to become an adaptation has uh, something to look up to and look down. So hopefully they, uh, you know, are inspired by The Last of Us. It can be done, obviously. Um, and Mars said something about a rolling average. I just did mine. You know, I took all my scores, divided it by nine, and it was an 85, which is a great series. Now, again, you know, some of the episodes could have been longer. Some of the episodes didn't have to be as long uh, with certain aspects. So could it have been better? It probably could have. But I think in general, this is definitely the best live action with real human being actors uh you know adaptations that we've seen so far yeah guys well listen what do you think about the last of us episode nine and please what you think in the comments below if you haven't done so yet hit that thumbs up and subscribe for future content join us on twitch we stream two to three days a week you can also find that in the description below as well as our socials to all multiple different platforms also located in the description below that is going to be it for our non-spoiler review but now we're going to transition to our spoiler discussion we're going to talk about the major key plot points as well as our overall feelings of the show with some including, uh, you know, spoiler kind of moments and topics. So if you want to keep watching, go right ahead. We're going to transition right to our next segment. Well, guys, we are now into our spoiler discussion. And I think this episode, you know, I said this in the non-spoiler review, it mirrors the game almost identically. Right? There's a lot of things that kept consistent to the game, even that perfect dialogue, location of where they're sitting and standing. 
identical. Like if you look at the, the IGN usually posts like a side by side comparison to the game and the TV show. There's multiple moments that, that are nearly identical to this moment. And I thought they did a great job with that. Now, we're going to talk about some key moments that happened. And, well, I'll kind of stop us at certain points to kind of ask a question of what you felt about it. So let's jump right into it. The episode begins with, obviously, it goes into actually Ellie's mom, which is Anna. She is basically running. She's, this is the actress who, who portrayed Ellie in the game. Um, so it's actually it's funny because we can hear her you know, uh, either running or saying something. I'm like, I can, I can hear Ellie's voice when she says that stuff, which is kind of funny to me. Um, but she was running away from an infected while she was going in labor, which is just like, you know, that, wow, the luck of that happening. Um, <laughs> it's pretty crazy, but she's running away from the infected. The infected breaks in. Uh, so she's fighting with the infected. The infected bites her, right? She stabs the infected and, and then, you know, is dead and then she's going to labor basically has a child instantly and you're like oh wow uh, she really you know, pushed that one yeah, out she really pushed that one out <laughs> while fighting the infected um but she realizes that she she just got bit and that the, the cordyceps will the cordyceps will basically transfer right into her and she's like oh, i gotta cut the umbilical cord and she does right the key thing that happens right away is you know she's you now she she realizes like oh the you know baby's born and everything and, and all of a sudden now uh I mean, now we see Marlene shows up, right? And Marlene, she was essentially with Anna. Anna was part of like the Fireflies, we believe. She's part of the Fireflies and, and Marlene was with her crew who was supposed to kind of meet up, rendezvous with her. And uh, she got separated from each other. And, you know, Mar you know, Marlene sees her and she obviously can tell right away she got bitten. She's like, yeah, I got bitten. Um, and she's like, he looks at the baby. And she's like, I, I cut the cord before like she bit me so she lied to her right to her because she realizes that if, if she says no i bit her she says the truth marlene will probably kill ellie and so she didn't say the truth and you know she tells her like listen like because anna and marlene apparently from what they said they knew each other their entire lives For a long so time, yeah. and and, Mar and anna says to her listen you need to take care of the child you know bring her with you keep her safe and you need to do it and then you, i need you to kill me and Marlene kind of, he's like, I'm not going to do that. I can't, I can't kill you. And takes the child and, and then she, she gives it to the, to the soldier. And then she just like, she realizes it was, she has to do. And it's, it's pretty brutal this part. And then she has to kill her. And then it goes right into the, to the part where it cuts right to Ellie and Joel. And I kind of want to yeah, get your opinion first. Can I just first. say this yeah. though? Yeah, she says ahead. to cover the baby's ears and the guy just didn't do it. The guy's like, like, what are you doing? Here you go. Here you go. <laughs> he goes and shoots her. Hey, hey, he he <laughs> Might as well run up to the door and put the baby like right there. Literally, I noticed that too. I was like, dude, just cover the damn, cover her damn ear. She like cries instantly because yeah, she heard it. She really heard the gunshot. Anyway, but like, dude, she literally just said cover the ears. Seriously, and, and so I kind of want to get your opinion about this first part because, I mean, did this really did this impact you? I feel like you know I've seen the game. They don't really go much into too detail about this moment. So this is something that was not in the game that they kind of just talk about. Of what yeah. you know how you know how they knew each other like how they knew each other and all yeah. that they just all that stuff so i mean i thought this was a great moment because it kind of sets the stage to kind of even marlene right and yeah. the thing is marlene like this is where it kind of weirds me out right because in the beginning of the show when marlene sees ellie she's all like she keeps her at distance right and that's not it's not necessarily marlene but it's actually marlene's soldier that keeps her at distance because she's like oh she might turn and she's like, I'm not, like, I'm not turning, right? And maybe it was because she got must have got bitten recently, but like that, the, she's, she, she must have gotten the wound and it didn't like transfer. Maybe that's what happened specifically. But you know, she's been around them for a long time, and obviously they didn't know that she was, she, their mom basically had given, had a child. Well, um, I, I think her. Marlene gave up the baby to Fedra in Boston. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know that part. But yeah. I'm saying that she knew who Ellie is. Like that's the point. Yeah, she, yeah. she was yeah. always keeping watch over, keeping tabs on Ellie this whole time. So she gave Ellie to Fedra to basically raise and to train to to a certain level. And then when the day came, they broke her out of of Fedra's control, and that's where the whole episode one begins. But I do remember, like right off the bat. They kind of kept her in, in a cage, almost like a cage, saying, "Oh, she must have gotten bit recently." But that's kind of like the interesting thing is that Marlene could have stepped in right away and been like, "Well, she's fine. You know, she's she's good." And she did eventually do that in episode one, but it was kind of just like 
how the, remember Ellie was kind of kept captive for a little bit. Yeah, um, it was, I think everybody. two weeks. Uh, I think it's because um, it was after the Left Behind. That's when they found her. Yeah, Fender yeah. Found her. So yeah, that was, that was a thing. so. Episode so that I kind of want to get your guys' opinion about this because I think it was a pretty brutal scene and it kind of good. It's a good job it sets it up about overall what happened. So, uh, Haki, I want to get your opinion here first. How did you feel about this first scene? Did it did it kind of stick with you about this kind of connection between Marlene and Ellie? Yeah, that, and I mean, just straight off the bat, definitely nightmare fuel. I mean, it was a pretty scary scene, you know. Um, but what I will say is it, it also gives insight on how Ellie could possibly be immune, you know. Um, her mom getting bit, the umbilical cord still being attached, so that could be one reason why she could be immune. And it was different than the game. You know, the game, Ellie gets a note, and in the note, it kind of says you know the, the 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 mom says you know something along the lines of my life is getting cut short so it, like you said it doesn't really go into what happened but this really gives us a, a vision of, of you know what could have happened and obviously what did happen and i think it was a a good scene and yeah marlene a little bit savage just killing her but she you know had to do what she had to do yeah and i, I think that's a reason why she didn't kill ellie uh, once Ellie was big because she knew who Ellie was and she obviously saw that Ellie didn't turn so um, right there she might she might have known that she was immune you know knowing everything so I, I thought the scene was very pivotal yeah and uh, Angelica what did you feel overall here I did I did like it and this is where I'll kind of uh, push back is um, like she I guess Marlene took uh, Anna's word for it that she cut it before she got bit so when she got bit in the mall um, and Riley turned and Ellie, you know, obviously that happened when when uh, the Fireflies found her, you know, they did see that she got bit, right? So I think they were being precautious. Even Marlene, she knew who Ellie was, but I don't think she knew um, that she was immune until they realized 10 days. She's been there for, what, 10 days? Yeah, um, under like captive and, and didn't turn. And that's when I think it clicked for Marlene. So um, I, I do like it instead of the note, right? Because the note, it was very vague, the note. Um, I know it's a, d a different, but I like how they showed us and it wasn't very long and it, it got you to the point. Um, so I, I think it was good. And, and again, the infected, when they show up, <laughs> they look great, but it's, it's, we want to see more because they do a really good job with the infected. It's just, man, I would love it's some just, more. It's just barely any of them, right? Yeah. And that's kind of the they're, issue. They're, they're missing in four episodes. I think completely missing. Right. We yeah, get a couple think of about it. You, you wouldn't even so think a little le almost 50% of the show um infected or not there so yeah, you, you would think that they're not even a thing they don't have a problem so i mean it's no, just like well they're, yeah they're not that many it's, it's so always like when they cure. show up you need someone to get infected <laughs> like, they only show up when someone needs to be infected for yeah, some reason i mean they prove their point it's just that like and they look great i mean they look great the normal the runners the clickers the bloater they all look great yeah, yeah. But, like we need more and another thing that you mentioned i know you mentioned about the two seasons um, they did say in that same interview that um, there's going to be more infected in the next season. I mean, which is God, like, I hope so. It's just that it was, and that was one of the more annoying concepts that they did yeah. in the show was there just wasn't any of them, right? There's there barely, they had showed it in the first, the second, uh, sorry, second episode, I think fifth episode. And then that was, and then we saw like maybe uh, first one and here. second, obviously. Yeah. Third one in the beginning where Ellie stabs him in the head. <laughs> yeah. Fourth and on. The yeah, one the sitting there gone. is crushed. Five. Ah. Yeah, I know, but it is in fact. Yeah. Five. <laughs> five, obviously. No yeah. one, none in six. None in seven. And one in eight. And so that's four episodes that... <laughs> the fact there. that we could count on one, one hand on two episodes, like, it's just like, dude. Like, oh, there's like three, there's like three of them, I think. Like, that's like the problem I see here. But let's keep it going because after that, it cuts right to Ellie and Joel... Ellie could tell right away is struggling over what just happened with David, right? She, she literally murdered him brutally in the last episode. And that kind of sticks with anybody. I mean, Joel kind of moved, moved on after all the deaths that he killed, he killed people with, but Ellie's a kid. She's 14 years old. She just brutally murdered this guy with a freaking cleaver. Um, you know, so she's clearly going to have some problems. And, you know, Joel kind of seems like he's like upbeat. He has like, he has like the life right now. He, he has his like you know um his stand-in daughter at this point walking you know she's safe you know they're all he's feeling better he's like hey I, you know i saw a guitar a broken up guitar in the in the, you know, one of the vans i, I want to kind of get a guitar maybe i can show you how to play you know that's like one of his things he used to do when he was you know back in normal life and 
she's just distant. She's just like, yeah, yeah, you know, you know, like all that stuff. But we after that, after the second section, they get to uh, they see the, um, you know, they talk about the idea of like, you know, maybe we don't need to do this, right? We don't need need to do this. And this is after she sees the draft. You can tell right away that she's super happy seeing an animal, seeing life, right? Is is like kind of what gives her some hope and just enjoyment and. This is identical to the game and that same conversation that he has with her about, you know, listen, we don't we don't have to go do this or right? you we can go and, you know, it's going to be dangerous. We can go and just, you know, go back to Jackson and, you know, just live life there, just live life with each other and, and with everybody there and have a real life again. And she's like, listen, after everything that we've done, after everything, she, and she puts a lot on her shoulders saying like she blames, you know, Henry and Sam's, you know, death on her. She blames deaths of other people like riley on her and she's saying after everything we've been through we need to go and see this through right and she said to joel you know after this is done and you know we can go do whatever you want i'll follow you anywhere right after the after we get this done she wants to see this finally through and i thought that was a good moment um yeah. i think at the end of the day this was this was a kind of like the full circle story right you want to see this through and and if you play the games you know like yeah you know th this is kind of a big moment because you know, Joel was so ready to end the mission to go home to just go find a home and just live the rest of life there. And he just wants to keep her safe at this point. And you can see that he's kind of, and you saw this at the last, last episode or the last part of the game that after the David incident, she, you know, she was like a daughter to him. Right. And she is, that's what she essentially is at this point. And he just cares about her safety. And I think this is such a big part um, of this, of this next part of the episode. And I kind of want to get your feeling here about, uh, you know, what I, if you were in the situation, would you kind of would you feel like you might want to just turn back, or do you feel like you gotta you know continue the mission? Because I think this is a big deal. I think for me, I mean, at the end of the day, if in the in the TV show they kind of emphasize this like you can save everybody with what you have, right? And she was acting like she was gonna save um save uh Sam here, and you know like it, she used her blood to try to save him, it didn't work. Like in the game, it wasn't really as like potent of her gonna be a a superhero. But she kind of had that like feeling, oh, I'm, I'm going to save people. And I think in, in that scenario, it was right for them to go continue going forward. But probably most people would probably turn around and say, let's just go let's go be safe. Let's just go find a place to be safe with. And, you know, who cares about the fireflies at this point after everything? Um, but I kind of want to get your guys' opinion here. Do you think that this was the right move here? Angelica, I'll let you go first. Um, yeah, I mean, I understand both sides. I understand Ellie wanting to push forward because, like you mentioned, it's kind of like survivor's guilt um, when they talk about how she's immune and everyone else is dying around her. Um, she wants, like, she wants to be that hero, you know, and uh, she's been through a lot. So um, I completely get it. I also get Joel's side because Ellie's become another daughter um, for for him. And so, you know, he just doesn't want to lose her. And so I thought this was such a good, this is one of those dialogues I was talking about um, that was really, really good. Um, that is, it, it was pretty memorable and there's no half measures is one of the lines that Ellie uses. And, uh, you know, it was good. Yeah. So hockey, what'd you feel about this one, man? Yeah. So like I said before, uh, you know, the roles were kind of reversed and in the beginning Ellie was trying to get Joel to talk. She was a talkative one. And then after what happened with David, kind of how you, um, hit on it was completely different she was completely disconnected you know joel was the one trying to get her to talk trying to get her to cheer up um and yeah that giraffe scene uh, i'm sure in the video game it was pretty cool to see that it was very cool to see that um from someone that you know didn't play the video game at all kind of you, you hit on it as well she got to see like a, a beautiful creature like an innocent creature just out pretty much out in the, in the wilderness you know uh, which kind of put a smile on her face with which then kind of put a smile on joel's face and i i think made him think you know this is what i want to see i want to see ellie happy so if we go to this hospital which we don't really even know we can get to there's only bad that can come from this that's pretty much what he said which you know is foreshadowing what happens but um again if you're joel you just want to go home but if you're ellie like you guys said you want to be the hero right now she's the only immune uh, immune person in the world and she's the only one that can save the world uh you know according to the fireflies and the scientists yeah so so obviously they joel agrees to say hey let's go to the hospital then we'll get there and it seemed like everything was fine like the, the traveling route to the hospital was a lot more easier in the show than it was in the game, but they, you finally get there and 
you know, uh, obviously, yeah, good the time they had was the right choice. Yeah, I mean, you had but to. But, if, but I got to say this that was another opportunity if they had more time that, in fact, it should have been involved. Yeah, because um, that's, like, that's that what was in, in the game. And, yeah, and, and that that is, again, why that's what hurts a little bit. And that's why there's multiple people to blame. But, like, why are we time crunched? Right? That's the problem. That's the problem. So the key thing, though, is that when you get to the dialogue between this part, I, Joel kind of goes into, like, how his life was before this whole moment. Because it was it's kind of showing a lot of, like, self-reflections going on before this this final part. And Joel is saying, you know, after Sarah died, he well, he was so ready to die. Like he really lived the life of just on the edge and was just doing things just to, just like hoping that so that he would basically would get killed. Essentially, like he was just doing things to do them, and he didn't have anything else in his life that mattered. And obviously, Tess came in, and he saw Tommy that was there. But after Sarah died, it was kind of just like he just wanted to end, and that's why a lot of things he said at the beginning, like you know, his whole hearing got shot because. You know, he had an altercation and, and obviously he flinched to pull the trigger and it, he kind of like it was almost like he wanted to get killed and it kind of blew out his hearing because of like all the, the altercation that he has and he said you know i got saved at one of these army camps where they have all the medical equipment here and and right from here he says you know what uh you know they had this conversation and then it's like i'm in the mood for some puns and then obviously they get stopped I uh, think a flashbang. Like, I got the I got the kind of flashbacks from Call of Duty game flashbang. Call of Duty. I can't, no, yeah, the Call yeah, of Duty no, flashbang. Yeah, I, I, I can't, can't see, see anything for like an hour. I can't see everything for an oh hour. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, I can't see anything for an hour, and and it was kind of crazy because you're like, well, they just they knocked out Joel, and you're like, dude, you know, at this point, you got him stunned. You could easily just take him down, arrest him, and then you don't have to knock him out like as bad as they did. They straight up knocked his ass out, and uh, obviously they arrest him, and then Joel wakes up to Marlene. In the room saying, oh, yeah, you know, you know, the fire, he realizes the fireflies. And then she's like, yeah, you know, sorry, uh, he knocked you, uh, knocked you on your ass. Uh, he didn't know. No one knew that you were guys who you were. Because if they did, they probably wouldn't have done anything. But they kind of were just securing the perimeter. And uh, so then Marlene kind of gives the news that, hey, you know, he's asking, where's where's Ellie? He's like, well, she's being prepped for surgery. Tells the whole story about basically the doctor, the surgeon there kind of has a feeling that. The surgery that they're going to that they're going to do is, you know, the cordyceps kind of develop in the brain. And so essentially she's saying that she's immune because the cordyceps think that she is a cordyceps, right? Because she was basically living off the mom. And when they was infecting her, they thought, oh, this is already a like a fungus like us, infected person, an yeah. infected person. So we're just now binded to them. And so even if the cordyceps are in her brain, they're not attacking her cells because they recognize her as being you know, thinking that they're a cordyceps. So she's saying, well, if we can get the cells that are mirroring like a human person's cells, then we it's essentially- It's the messenger. Like they're sending yeah, messages basically. from her brain. So they want to get that. Yeah, get that right, piece from her and then be and able to duplicate, it, duplicate it, it, put it to yeah. a vaccine so that more people can have it so that they, they essentially can kill the virus, uh, kill the infection, kill the cordyceps really. And, and that means you can cr basically create a cure. And even Joel recognizes this and says, well, the cordyceps are in the brain. So how can you remove that? And still, and she really, she says, well, you know, we, you know, this is a, this is obviously really important. We, we need to do this to save so many more lives and she'll and die in the process. Ellie. And they didn't tell and Ellie didn't tell that Ellie. they didn't tell Ellie about this because they didn't want her to get scared about it or anything. But the part, the point is, is that when she says, you know, you know, she's going to die you knew Joel was not going to be okay with it. And Joel basically said right away, like, take me to Ellie now, take me to her. And they stop him. And she said, well, you're going to take him outside, give him his, his pack and everything, bring him to the highway. And if he tries to do anything then shoot him, like she's just said, you know, like we're stopping him. And obviously Marlene seems pretty like brutal with this whole part. Cause to us, Joel is, you know, the main character. He's the guy. He's somebody that is cares about Ellie so much. But so then Joel breaks out of the two guards control in the game. It was one guard. Doesn't matter. It was basically the same way. He was pretending like he was going to leave. And then he just busts out, takes the gun, kills the guy. Asks and where they are. Time. Yeah. And then it's just straight up Punisher. Punisher. Yeah. Well, he, Joel, John Joel just, Punisher, John Wick. Yeah, yeah. Joel just goes <laughs> into full Terminator mode and just starts whacking everybody. Um, and they show a cut scene. There's not a lot of sound. It was just music. And Joel just starts going hallway to hallway. Just be brutal. Just killing everybody. And I, I really did like there's one part I mentioned this in the, uh, you know, off screen. There's like one part where he like kills people, three people at once. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, OK, 
Like, I know he's being brutal and he's killing people. Like, he's I mean, he's a former, like, you know, military person. But, like, I don't think Joel was a Navy SEAL that was just clapping people left and right. Like, he was literally destroying people. And I get it. You're crunched in time. You don't have time to go through different parts of the building like you do in the game. The game, that is a, that's one of the hardest moments of gaming I had to do. Going through that area with the mechanics they had where you can't really dip and dodge like you could in the second game. Like, the first game, it's like, slow mechanical and you gotta find a way to escape getting killed constantly and so you know he gets through everybody and gets to the surgeon's room and you know the surgeon's like stops her stops joel saying no we can't i can't let you do that but he i wish he did more like the game did here where the surgeon was like got the knife and was holding to him like no we need to save everyone this is like showing the importance of the situation even more than what he kind of doctor did kind of doctor was like oh i can't let you do that like his hands like this like not really aggressive. Oh, he the I know, he, no, no, the no. he tried to. He was like this. He was like, I can't let you do I that. I won't let you take her. I can't let you take her. And then he just turns and just grabs his shot instantly. I was just like, I get you could like you could you could mirror it a little bit more there. He just hands like I'm sterile. I can't I can't do I know, anything. But we're on a we're on a time doc. We're on a time like, crunch. I'm like okay, I can't talk you to kill, you. You kill him. <laughs> you kill him. I whatever. can't talk to you. <laughs> like, get kill him. Whatever. I'm just gonna do this. Like I can't, I don't want to hurt you. <laughs> Yeah, next time but um so then he obviously gets ellie and gets out of there and obviously like I, like i said i could be that guy just keep comparing the game in the game they made the, the intensity of the moment bigger because they made guards chasing you while you're getting out and you're like oh my god and you're holding ellie you can't do anything and you just gotta keep running to the elevator and you get down the elevator you get to the basement and then now marlene's the last person there and she stops you and she keeps saying you know listen like i know you i know that you love her and you want to protect her, but you have to understand. And he keeps saying like, you don't understand this whole situation. He's like, well, I knew her since birth. I, I understand the situation because it's a similar feeling that she had, but she's like, well, this is for the greater good. This is what Ellie would want to do all this stuff. And, and, and then it cuts away. Right. And it shows Joel in the car with Ellie. And, and Joel says, you know, uh, you know, I saw I talked to I talked to Marlene and they said they have a lot more, a lot more kids like you uh, in, you know, in in the hospital. And they they realized that what, you know, they ran some tests on you, whatever. But they said that they can't do anything. They said they tried, but they, they said that it was a failure. And so they let us go. And then Ellie starts to pick up, honestly, on a lot of these things, just like she does in the game. She's like, well, where are my clothes? And he's like, oh, uh, you know, we'll, Raiders attack. Yeah, well, yeah, Raiders attack. Yeah, 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 I, I, yeah. I barely got you out of there in time. And then she's like, were people killed? And he's like, yeah, people died. And then she's like, what about Marlene? And he doesn't even answer her. And she is like, she kind of, you can tell that she doesn't really fully believe him in a lot of these things. And it cuts. And like, as Joel's talking about the moment, like, oh yeah, they, there's a lot of people there. They don't really need you. And it shows him killing, shooting her like at the moment. And that's exactly what happens in the game. Like it does exactly that moment where it just cuts away. And I was sitting there just playing it like, what, what the hell just what, happened? What, what's going on? <laughs> And because I knew right away, I was like, because this yeah. is last of us, right? You're like, okay, everything's going to according to plan. Like, there's always a moment and that is going to get really screwed up that's going to happen to change everything up. And exactly on par, as he's talking to it, just cuts to him capping her. And I was like, oh, Jesus. Like, and then it goes, like, it cuts away after she, like, doesn't, he realizes that she doesn't really believe him. It cuts away again to, like, Joel, like, in the, in the, by, in the basement, in the garage. And Marlene's like, just let me go. And he's like, well, I can't because you'll just come after her and just kills her, like ends her. Yeah. And then and then you're like, Jesus Christ. And then it gets to the final part where they're, you know, they're walking to Jackson. They got to go hike or whatever. And they're, they're talking. And Joel's just like a normal person again. Ellie's still distant. Um, and he's like, you know, Sarah would have loved you. I think that she just realized that just like I do, like you're funny and, you know, you're like, you, she would have loved to be here. And Ellie's like, you know, I would have liked to see meet her too. And like, I think that was a real, but. I finally get to Jackson and you know, this is a big moment. Ellie says, you know, the first, she tells the truth. First person I ever killed was Riley. And you know, says she blames herself. She basically blames herself for the loss and lost a lot of people. And Joel's like, it's not your fault for what happened. Like this, this, this just happens. And then it ends, the finale ends with Ellie. And this is just like the game. Ellie just says, you need to promise me. You need to swear to me right now. Like it was what you said, the truth that they don't, that, you know, that everything that happened, with the fireflies exactly happened with them and he lies he straight up says a lie and you know she you could tell that she doesn't fully believe him but she's just like okay like and then that's how and it fade ends to black. fade the black and 
And so the big question before we close out the show is, if you were put in the same scenario, or not really you, but do you think that Joel made the right decision, right, overall with doing what he did? And I think it really depends on how you look at it. I think Joel living with himself would not be able to to not to do something different. I think he would not be able to allow Ellie to die the way she that they had planned for her to die. I think that that Joel he already said the foreshadowing that he his life meant nothing, right? With the Sarah gone. Yeah, he tried killing himself. Yeah, he, he basically tried to kill himself and he it meant nothing to him. But finding something new to fill the void was gave him life. And you could tell the way he acts. Like he never from the beginning of the show to the end of the show completely different character. Right. And so, you know, you can see that that's that was something to so to him. There is no other option. Right. And, and to, you know, I think he he makes the good option, but there's always the 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 effects of what you do. Right. That's always the key thing. So his effect is Ellie, not, Ellie not dying for the sake of everybody. There's no cure. And essentially it's like it's there's no life is going to be the same way like this forever. Right. And then that's essentially the key thing. But I kind of want to get your guys' opinion on this. So, Haki, what do you think? Do you think this is the right decision for Joel to do this? Yes, yeah, so like you said, there's kind of two sides to this, right? So, Joel making this decision is obviously basing it off of what happened in his, his, you know, in his past. There's no way that he would have let Ellie die like this, just like his daughter died, um, kind of in an instant way. Um, now, I also get what Marlene and the Fireflies are doing. Even though it's not guaranteed that um, this cure would work, this is definitely their best chance, you know, pretty much ever to get a cure, right? They have someone who's immune, the scientists, you know, they, they might have done other procedures on other infected people. So the scientist kind of has an idea. So I get both of the, uh, you know, both the different sides of the coins here, but Again, if I'm Joel, I'm doing the same thing, you know, and you also have to think what Ellie would, would have done. You know, I think not playing the game and not really knowing a whole lot, I think Ellie would have rather sacrificed herself for the chance to save humanity. Kind of like how, how you said, she, in my eyes, she kind of knows that Joel is, is lying. And, and I think um, that's going to obviously affect her, her relationship in the, in the part two. But, um, you know, Joel was trying to be the parent and, you know, lie to his daughter for, you know, her safety. So, yeah. So, uh, Angelica, do you think this was the best? This is the option that he should have taken? Yeah, it's a tough one, right? I, I agree with Haki. I know both sides, especially on the Fireflies, where this is an opportunity that there could be a cure. And I wish they actually added this detail a little bit into this show was that, the fireflies in the game you come across documentation they don't talk about it, but you come across documentation that there have been others that they thought could be immune and they experimented and tried these procedures on them and they died and the cure did not come to fruition right so this was another experiment now they do say it could they didn't guarantee that it was going to cure they it was still like but i wish that they had that detail because it could show you that hey you know they've tried multiple times and failed so this was not a guarantee and they made a huge mistake not telling Ellie. And I do think that was a big issue um, on the Firefly side. And Joel, you could tell selfishly doing this out of because he loves uh, Ellie now and doesn't want to lose her. And does. And he said it previously in the episode that, you know, when he didn't kill himself and Ellie says, well, I guess time heals all wounds. And he says it wasn't time that did it for me. Right. And yeah. he's, it's pretty much Ellie. Right. So she's his purpose. And so that's what it is. It's a moral dilemma. And uh, I do, you know, I saw a lot of people saying, how could you end the episode that way? Like, that was the point is I want you to say, Joel's not a normal hero. And he's, you know, like he has villainness to him and good guy to him. And this is the moral dilemma. That's like, there's not a strict good guy, bad guy. That's the thing that Last of Us does really well. And this episode shows that. Yeah, guys, if you didn't know by now, it's like almost like the Game of Thrones kind of meme that a lot of people say. It's like, if if you thought this was going to be a happy ending, then you haven't been watching this entire time. <laughs> um, it's that's what Last of Us is, guys. It's not a happy ending. It's just a an ending, right? It's just an ending of some sort. And for people that didn't know that, uh, I think you probably should know by now that that's because that's how the show is. So I do appreciate everyone that came out and then watched all the way to the end. Uh, if you did, what do you think overall about the, the episode as well as the season? 
Put what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't done so yet, I really am surprised if you didn't. Hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. And obviously, you can join us on Twitch on multiple days a week, two to three days a week. You can join us, join us there in the comments below or in the description below. And you can join our socials also located in the description below. But until next time, guys, it's Marsman from Marsman Gaming signing off. Peace out, guys.